Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here, once again, is in my sister's basement, my temporary shop. And today we're going to finish up the machining on these candle stand bases. Um, to catch up to speed, a couple years back, my dad asked if I could make him some new bases to hold candles under these uh, hurricane chimneys, a couple different sizes of these. And of course, I said, sure. And then I went on to complicate it, to change the design from its basic elements. Um, we've already uh, cut the circles on the bandsaw, sanded them perfectly round. That was one video. I'll link to that below if you missed that. Um, we've already routed the edges, creating this little raised section, somewhat of a tenon that's going to center us uh, with our chimney. Instead of cutting a groove in this, I, I just wanted to make the shape a little bit smaller, thinner, a little more dainty. And while doing that, automatically created that little uh, butte, as somebody pointed out. Now we need to put some feet on the bottom. Do we need to? Yes, because it's me. They need to have feet. Uh, three feet to raise them up off the table. One of the problems with the originals was as they got wet, either from rain from above, and the groove would hold rain, I have no groove, or from spills or puddles on the table. And so by raising this up on a couple feet, I think that's going to help these uh, not only survive any water, but they'll also sit more stable, even if they do cup at some point. What I'm using for feet here are these little 3 8 inch hardwood buttons. These are the kind of buttons that you might put over a screw. Now, where we position these is important. If if I were running a, uh, three screws into this, I would want to make sure I don't put two screws along the same grain line. You see the little lines running there. If I ran a screw here and a screw here, it could possibly uh, split the wood. I just, for best practice, I just follow that practice. Also, if these are to cup, that's also going to help to kind of stabilize this. If I put one here, one here, and one here. Now, let me show you here on the table. We'll just demonstrate like this. Now, I'll play around with how far outboard these should go. I obviously don't want them there. I also want to make sure that when I drill my 3 8 inch diameter hole, that there's no chance I'm going to come out of the profile on the other side. Uh, so we'll figure out what that distance is. But how to determine how to divide this into equal thirds is a, a fun little project. And I also need to do the same here. Now, I could make myself a drilling jig, a little template with some holes drilled in it. And I could position a pin directly underneath my drill bit, lay the template on there with this piece attached, and drill my hole, pick it up, move it to the next hole. Drill that hole, lift it up, move it to the next hole. Um, there are other ways we can do this, but just for the sake of expedience, I'm going to make a simple little template and transfer the locations to drill using this center punch. Now, if you're not familiar with these, these are super handy. Um, it's a steel punch. It's an, under spring tension. And as we push this down, it compresses a spring and then a little hammer or an anvil flies forward and taps on the back side of that. And so that gives us a nice little impact and leaves us a very distinct mark. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna make myself a little template with some holes that size to, to guide it through. And let me show you how we're gonna lay that out. So I'm gonna make myself a, a little template here that I can use to mark those. And uh, to do this, it would have been helpful if I had left my compass set up before I drilled my, my pivot hole, but uh, we can get close here. Right about there. And hopefully you'll be able to see this line that I'm drawing. All right, so that should be the same size as my disc, it is. Um, and let's just lay a straight edge on here and I'm going to intersect this. And let's say this is the side I'm gonna be drilling one of my holes. 
if I take the same compass and put it over on this side, right on the edge where our line intersects, make a mark here and make a mark here, connecting my center line with where that intersects, I can now divide this into thirds. And again, for what I'm doing here with a candle stand, this is going to be close enough. From here, I can figure out where I want to position these, and I'll drill a small hole for my punch. All right, you can see, still working with twist bits. I got some nice tear out. <laughs> Looks like five eighths of an inch is about the perfect position for those. So now I'm just going to lay this on here and orient this looking at the grain and orient it like that. And I'm going to put the punch in, push down. And then while I'm here, while it's fresh in my presence, I'm going to go ahead and highlight those dimples. Now they're, they're pretty good but just a good habit to get into. Same thing here, there's my grain direction. We'll make sure one of those holes is at 12 o'clock. And then we'll go around the clock. And that's where we're gonna drill. Now, one more thing I did wanna to mention to you. Uh, I, I bought a package of 50 of these buttons and inevitably there's always one or more that have been scalped. Look at that, it looks terrible. That's totally unusable. And uh, I don't know, they're, they're in there, it just happens. So this is why I buy more than I need. I bought two packages of 50 to make sure I had plenty to get the job done. All right, I'm gonna mark all of these and then we'll go to the drill press. Now you might be asking, couldn't I just gone ahead and, and mark that with a pencil? Yes, I could have, but by having that little indentation, it just makes it a bit easier to get those holes drilled with my drill bit. It keeps it from wandering when I first start out the hole. All right, so now in the drill press position, I'm, I'm always accustomed to using a piece of scrap wood as a backup piece. Um, I find that the miter slots or the table insert things might cause me issues. And in fact, those are all pretty sharp edges that could introduce scratches here. So I just in a habit, I also don't like drilling through my table. Now, one question that you probably ought to have is if I'm drilling down over that, that, uh, that profile, is it going to push that forward? Yeah, probably will. Um, I put could put double-sided tape on here. That could help. I could hold it down. I really am not all that concerned with it. But just to eliminate that as a, as a possible problem, let's just throw together a, a quick little fixture. And uh, what I've got here are a couple scrap pieces of my oak. And I've already drilled them. And we'll throw a little two-sided tape on here. And we'll put a small piece, small block here on the, uh, on the scrap wood. Anywhere, it really doesn't matter. Right there is perfect. Let's Align these with a couple wood screws. And of course, I'm working with just some random screws I found over on my sister's bench. And so they are uh, really long. So I went ahead and gra grabbed a couple washers. Let's put a couple washers underneath these just so I don't go all the way through and don't have the tips of those screws protruding scratching my table. All right, we'll just drive those in. All 
and there we go. That's pretty much all I need now. I can tuck my pieces underneath that, and as I apply pressure here, there'll be no lifting on this side. Next, I need to set the depth. So as we always do in setting the depth for drilling with the shopsmith, we, uh, we take, in the case of a brad point bit, we take that tip and bury that into the wood because, you know, our dowel, or in our case, the little button, can't go all the way to the same depth as that tip. Now, from that point, I need to go however deep, and let's say it's just a hair over a quarter of an inch, and that's it. <laughs> so here we go. So what's next for these? Well, uh, I gotta get the feet glued on and then we're packing up and heading down to Texas. Now in Texas, we're meeting family for vacation and I'm gonna transfer these to my dad who asked me to make these for him. Um, we're also gonna spend some time with the grandkids finishing these. They still need to get a top coat and we're going to be applying an exterior grade finish that's made by General Finishes. An excellent finish, I picked it up on Amazon and for sure, We'll link to it, um, you know, just in case they do get left out overnight and get some dew or some wetness or if something spills underneath them and the little feet get wet, we want to be sure that they're fully protected. Uh, I'll be sure to get some video footage and some uh, photographs of that process. Uh, I look forward to your questions, comments, cheap shots in the midweek follow-up video. And with that, make it a great week. I appreciate you joining me along on this trip, and uh, I'll try to get some footage of that last step up, and the goose wants to say hey.